First of all, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Education USA is a program in many countries around the world that helps students and families understand how higher education in the United States works, and more importantly, how you can find the best fit for your future. You can make an appointment with an advisor in your own country and learn about almost any aspect of higher education in the USA, everything from short programs through to doctoral programs where you earn a PhD and even postdoc programs. And we have individuals here who can answer questions about just about any level or program that you're interested in. Um, education USA also has uh, our own programs, information sessions, and other opportunities to learn about the possibilities for higher education in the United States. With us tonight, we have myself, Will Bacher from Luxembourg. We also have Elizabeth Bloxham, who is in Belgium, and uh, Manon Klosteren, who is in the Netherlands. So thank you all for joining. Uh, I do want to just point out a little bit of information before we move on uh, for um, to our main speakers here who are all uh, representatives from universities in Washington. First, I want to show you this uh, contact information, but we will put this up again later in the session. That's all available to you uh, to get in contact with Education USA advisors. There's also an Education USA website you can see across the top, educationusa.state.gov. Uh, that represents a network of advisors of res and resources. So there's a lot of introductory material online there, uh, and this is a good place to start. But as always, your best bet is to get in touch with us with your Education USA Center in your country and wind up talking to an individual advisor. I do want to take just a minute to uh, give you an idea of the timing. So you may be coming to this wondering sort of like, well, how quickly do things need to move? What do I need to be doing if I want to go, especially for an undergraduate education in the US? So all the universities in the United States have their own deadlines for applications. There is no national deadline. There is no standard set time for you to turn in your application or even for you to learn whether you've been accepted as a student. So uh, once again, your best bet is to talk to us one on one, but also to talk to individual representatives from the universities in sessions like this, but also they're always very happy to hear from you individually, whether it's by email or by phone. I think you'll find that US universities are often very responsive to your questions. You won't be bothering them at all. Many people are there just to help you out for that kind of thing. I do want to highlight that if you are looking to start classes in September of 2022 and a little bit more than a year from now, then in the next few months, you should be getting an idea of where you want to apply. So that's in part because you'll submit your applications as early as this November if you want to start next year. But that means that if you want to go to an American university, this is a very good time for you to learn about universities and add them to your list where you'll send in your applications starting in November through as late as March, but we don't want you to miss any deadlines. That's why we use November, even though, as you'll probably hear tonight, there are plenty of universities that accept applications later. So now let's hear from Marie, who will talk to you about the possibilities for your education in Washington State in the United States of America. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Will, and thank you so much to Education USA um, colleagues in Luxembourg, Belgium, and the Netherlands. And thank you, all of you who are joining us tonight for this presentation. We hope it proves useful. Um, we're excited to share with you some of the many reasons why Washington State is a great destination for your higher education studies and just a wonderful place to live. Um, our colleges and universities represent a diverse range of institutions from community colleges to state universities and private universities. I am Marie Whalen. I'm the Associate Director of International Admissions and Recruitment at Whitworth University and a native of Luxembourg. I am here tonight with my colleague, uh, my colleagues Kimberly Valente from Central Washington University, Casey Egger from Western Washington University, Bjorn Myrie from Washington State University and Katie Thompson from the Community Colleges of Spokane. Um, next slide, please. Next, next slide, please. Um, as you can see, um, 
uh, Washington State is a bit of a distance um, from Luxembourg, Belgium, and the Netherlands, just over 8,000 kilometers or so. And we are located in a region of the United States called the Pacific Northwest. And the Pacific Northwest, and especially Washington State, has an extraordinarily diverse range of landscapes, climates, and educational and economic opportunities that international students can and do take advantage of. Uh, my colleague Casey Egger will start us off with some information about our beautiful state. Next slide. Thanks, Marie. As uh, Marie mentioned, my name is Casey Egger. I work with Western Washington University. I manage the international admissions and outreach. I'm going to talk a little bit about Washington State in general and why you should study here or why students actually do study here. Um, what you saw from the map, and uh, as we all saw, Washington State is on the Pacific Coast uh, or Pacific Ocean. It's a northwest coast of the United States, just above California and Oregon. And I like to be very clear, and I, although you saw on the map, we are not Washington, D.C. So the capital of the United States is not in Washington State, but uh, still, nonetheless, the state itself was named for the very first president, uh, George Washington. Uh, Washington's population is about 7.6 million people. That makes us the 13th most populous state in the United States. Um, with our largest city being Seattle. And that's followed by Spokane, which uh, Katie from Com Community Colleges in Spokane will represent as well as Tacoma, just south of Seattle, that's our third. Uh, the state consistently ranks among the best for things like life expectancy. It has low in unemployment. It's ranked in the top uh, in the United States for things like safety and healthcare. Um, and we have a strong economy. In fact, um, at last, survey, we were the fastest growing economy um, in the United States. And a Fortune magazine survey um, of the top 20 most admired companies were all found here in the state of Washington. And those are small companies like Amazon, Starbucks, Microsoft, and Costco, obviously being uh, facetious there, very big companies, very famous. Um, Seattle has many international airports, one in Spokane, one in Bellingham, um, one south. Uh, but uh, our largest international airport and the one that's most well known is SeaTac. That's just Seattle Tacoma area. Um, we're a favorite destination for international students, especially those looking for high quality and affordable education. You'll find um, as you speak to us that uh, a tuition in Washington state is actually quite affordable. Um, we offer education in a safe, clean and friendly environment. And really, if you're looking for America the beautiful, if you've heard that phrase before, you'll find it here in Washington. Um, we're known as the evergreen state because of our natural beauty. We have lush evergreen pine and fir forests. We're, um, as mentioned, right there on the water. And for the last um, few years or the last five years, we've been considered one of the top five of the most environmentally friendly states. So if you're interested in outdoor adventure, innovation, and cultural opportunities, you'll be able to learn more about those today. Uh, and next slide, please, Katie. There we go. So really, no matter what degree or industry um, you're thinking of pursuing or um, getting into, you for, you'll find that opportunities not only to study, but to get hands-on training here in Washington State. We have a fascinating mix of agriculture, maritime, um, industrial, industrial, as well as high-tech influences um, that contribute to the state of Was Washington's cultural heritage. Um, so this is a land of loggers and farmers and ranchers, cowboys, fishermen, sailors, high-tech visionaries, as well as um, ambitious entrepreneurs. So this is where actually com uh, commercial aviation took flight with, uh, with Boeing. And it's where computer technology was transformed from just an abstraction to an everyday tool that we use now. Um, it's a place where some of the coolest rock stars were, were born. Um, Nirvana, uh, Jimi Hendrix, people like that, uh, Pearl Jam, as well as some of the uh, um, greatest guitarists and audiences that, we've, uh, that, uh, that we know in, in, in pop rock. Um, so why is Washington State such a creative hotspot? 
Um, well, it's a mixture of our native people here in the state of Washington, but also pe uh, people of Latina or Latin descent, uh, European descent, Asian, African, very diverse state. Um, there are internship and job opportunities, as I mentioned, in Fortune 500 companies. We are the second strongest tech market in the US, and I would guess and believe that's probably just second to Silicon Valley in, in the Northern California area, uh, but also ranked number 10 best place to live in the US, according to US News and World Reports. And as I mentioned, our primary industries are very diverse and vast, but the primary ones are agriculture, aerospace, technology, and healthcare. And with that, I'm going to pass it to my colleague, I believe this will be Katie, talking, oh no, this will be Bjorn, sorry, talking a little bit more about why Washington. Well, I love Washington for the outdoor beauty, and I hope you get to experience this as well. Hopefully as a student, when you come to our state to study at one of our colleges and universities, or even come to Washington as a tourist, uh, you can go skiing, you can go sailing, you can go um, kayaking uh, 12 months a year because we have four different mountain ranges, we have glaciers, we have the ocean, we have the inland body of uh, the salt water called Puget Sound, lots of lakes and rivers all over the state. Uh, we do get four seasons of weather throughout the state. The Seattle area kind of has two seasons, but the rest of the state does get four true seasons. Um, and we have big cities, we have small towns that have great character, great uh, diversity as Casey was mentioning. If you're into sports and uh, professional sports or amateur sports, we have lots of sports in the largest city of Seattle. Um, we just got a new uh, hockey team, a NHL hockey team. That's exciting. We have a football team, basketball team, a women's basketball team, baseball. Um, and the outdoor beauty is really what makes Washington State truly remarkable. We have, a, like I said, we have a, a temperate rainforest and a desert in the same state with all these different mountains. So you don't have to travel all over the America to see diverse landscapes, just come to Washington and you'll get a little bit of everything. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, my name is Kimberly. I represent Central Washington University. Um, now we'll transition a little bit more into higher education opportunities within Washington State now that we know um, of all of the other reasons to visit Washington State. Um, it is an excellent place also to study. We were ranked number three best in the US for higher education. And there's a huge variety, um, not only in landscape, but in types of education opportunities that you'll find in Washington. We have smaller schools ranging from 1,500 undergraduate students up to giant um, universities of up to about 46,000 students. So um, whether you want a smaller uh, environment, smaller class sizes, or you want um, some of the biggest and best facilities, you'll find them in different parts of our state. And along with that, as you have seen, we have small towns and big cities. So that means you'll have the opportunity to study on a campus uh, in the Seattle area or Spokane where you'll get a little bit more of a city feel, but we also have campuses in our smaller towns or medium-sized towns, Ellensburg, Pullman, Bellingham, a little bit more suburban or rural environments. We have a variety of different types of education that you can pursue, whether you're looking for liberal arts education, We'll hear a little bit more about community and technical colleges and transfer options that we have in the state, uh, research universities, both uh, private and public. Uh, it is a very popular, popular destination for international students, ranked number 11 in the US, and we have about 27,000 international students in, in Washington state right now. Next slide, please. Kimberly. Hi, I'm Katie Thompson. I uh, represent the Community Colleges of Spokane, and I'm going to give you a brief overview about community colleges. Um, so we have about 34 community colleges in um, throughout the state of Washington. Uh, community colleges offer programming um, at the undergraduate level. One of our most popular programs with international students is the two plus two um, transfer pathway. Um, we, uh, a number of our, the community colleges across the state have guaranteed pathway partners 
relationships with um, universities. Uh, for example, the Community Colleges of Spokane has have has these partnerships with each of the universities um, presenting today. Community colleges offer a variety um, of, of programming as well, including um, often English language program and workforce and skill development is kind of our other forte. So who is a community college for? It's for everyone. Um, especially those who are looking for educational opportunities at the undergraduate level. So almost half of the students um, studying in the United States um, in higher education are enrolled at a community college or begin at a community college. Um, we have accessible admissions, which means we do not require SAT or ACT scores. Um, often, many of our, our community colleges do not um, require TOEFL or IELTS scores either, um, if you, meaning you can start in the um, intensive English language programs at the, the colleges. We have no uh, low or minimum grade point average um, for most programming, and the application um, process is, is fairly simple and quick. Um, so community college is a great um, a great place to start uh, because it's um, easy uh, admissions as well as lower tuition um, fees. So the cost of community colleges tends to be about half or maybe a third of what the cost of universities um, typically cost. So um, students can save up to 40 or $50,000 um, and graduate with both an associate's degree, a two-year degree, and um, a bachelor's degree um, at, at the university level. Uh, we tend to have small class sizes at the Community Colleges of Spokane. Our average class size is, is 19 um, students to one instructor. And we encourage individualized support um, in an atmosphere that really um, uplifts our students. Um, it's a great opportunity to experience a different institutions um, when you start at a community college and continue on to the university. And one added benefit for, for undergraduate students who, who start at a community college is that you get an additional opportunity um, to participate in post in, in OPT, which is um, stands for optional practical training, um, which provides uh, students authorization to work in their field of study in the United States. So a little bit about our, our school. Um, we are the second largest community college. We're located in the second largest city of Washington in Spokane, Washington. We're about a 45 minute flight from C the Seattle um, airport, the SeaTac airport. Um, we have over 120 programs available to students um, in, in many different areas of study, ranging from liberal arts to STEM to professional technical um, degrees. We have offer short term um, certificate options. Um, the cost to attend the community colleges of Spokane, um, the total cost is under $20,000. So this is, again, this is a great place to start and continue your education um, here in Washington State. Um, our athletics, we have a great um, athletics team. We're um, consistently ranked um, in the top in our, in our state, in our region. Um, and Spokane, unlike um, our friends in Seattle, is famous, um, who are famously um, known for lots of rain. Spokane has the, those four seasons that Bjorn mentioned before um, and over 265 days of sun. I'm gonna um, pass the presentation now on to one of my colleagues. All right, so I, as I said before, represent one of six public universities that we have in Washington State. Um, so some public universities have entrance options that include pathway programs and English programs, just like um, Katie mentioned with community colleges. Uh, because they collect a large portion of the operating funds from federal and local state governments, public universities are able to keep tuition costs more affordable um, to the average student. 
Many of the larger universities in the United States are home to state-of-the-art research facilities, science labs, teaching hospitals, libraries. Um, these facilities attract top teachers and world-renowned professors, giving students the benefit of learning from the best in their field while having access to cutting-edge technologies. Public universities tend to be larger and have a diverse student body. Their higher visibility, greater affordability, and larger resources make public universities enticing to college-bound students and international students as well. Uh, a, di a diverse student body provides students with a deeper educational opportunity. Students work collaboratively with others from different backgrounds. You'll be exposed to a lot of different cultures. At public state universities, you often find that there are more degree choices and a wider course selection. You'll also find a, a larger scale of things like athletics, clubs, organizations, and a lot of opportunities to network. Public universities offer a variety of resources for students on campus, including assistance with uh, things like internship placement, uh, career centers that help prepare them for the job market, career fairs on campus. So there's a lot of connection um, with our public universities to industry. And at public universities, you'll also typically find that we have uh, both undergraduate and graduate programs available. So I'll pass it on to the next slide where I'll talk about Central Washington University. So as I said, we're one of six public universities in the state. At Central Washington University, we're a mid-size university with about 12,300 students. <clears throat> and of those, we currently have about 350 to 400 international students from about 56 different countries. So you'll find that at Central Washington University, you'll meet students from countries you may have never met anyone from before. We recruit and do outreach and have alumni connections with students from countries all over the world. Um, our tuition as a public university is fairly affordable at just, uh, just around $24,000 per year. Um, but what's really great about Central is that we have excellent scholarships for international students specifically. And that will reduce your tuition up to 50%. So you could be paying closer to uh, tuition rates of a community college, but at a university. Um, we have stackable scholarships as well, which we'll talk more about scholarships later on, but that means you can combine different scholarships um, from things like athletics or maybe theater performance with the international scholarship. So we really work with students on affordability. We have 135 different majors, so there are a lot of different things to choose from, from science, engineering, technology, computer science, um, a lot of different options for students. And our class sizes are about 18 to 1, so small class sizes where you'll work closely with your faculty members and really get to know your classmates. Our location, as you can see here on the map, right in the middle of the state in Ellensburg, which is a smaller town surrounded by natural beauty. We're about 90 kilometers uh, east of Seattle, where we also have university centers. So we have campus locations in and around Seattle as well as in Ellensburg. We have on-campus housing available to students as well with 24 different options. Um, and along with that, we have about 130 different clubs and activities that students can get involved with. So a lot to do especially at our main campus in Ellensburg. And I'll pass it on to the next slide. Great, thanks. I just want to confirm that uh, you all can hear me. Can you really give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? My internet connection is uh, a little bit lagging. Casey, you're you're pretty broken up. Could you go ahead and try talking again? Yeah, I I appear to be lagging a little bit. Let's go to Bjorn and come back to me. Hello, everybody. I'll talk about Washington State University. My name is Bjorn Myrie. I'm assistant director of international recruitment. 
just like Western Washington and Central Washington, I'm what WSU is one of the six public universities in the state of Washington. Uh, we are truly statewide university. Our largest campus, though, is in Pullman, Washington. So Pullman is in southeast Washington in a traditional college town. So if you've seen maybe movies about students going to a residential campus experience in a big public university, that's kind of what WSU is about. We have 20,000 students at our, our oldest campus in Pullman, Washington, with um, nearly 200 fields of study. And we are a comprehensive R1 tier one research university. So there's lots of different ways you can categorize and classify colleges, universities in America. We learned about community colleges. We're learning about public colleges right now. And then we'll learn about liberal arts private universities a little bit later today. But our students and professors come to WSU to do research, or if they're not expected to do research, they will do it before they graduate. It's a great opportunity for them. Um, and we don't have an admission deadline. Uh, some of my other colleagues uh, are the same way. We have rolling admissions, so they students can apply anytime, just as Will alluded at the beginning of the presentation. You can start at WSU in August or January. We're one of the few universities or colleges in the state that use semesters. So we have two semesters in our academic year, where most of my other uh, colleges and universities in the state use quarters. So there's four quarters in a year. Um, but we don't require SAT or ACT for admission or for a scholarship. And if you have a 3.3 GPA or higher, you'll get a merit scholarship at the time of admission. And if uh, you have any questions, please email me and I will be in a breakout room later. But um, we have other campuses across the state, but I won't go into all those other campuses and everything. Um, please look at our website, email me. We'll talk in the breakout room later. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Marie will talk about private universities because she okay. works at one. So it's a That's great right. thing. That's right. Um, so you will find that there really is a lot of diversity among private um, institutions of higher education, um, including in Washington state um, to begin with. These institutions can range from very small, under a thousand students to medium sized, typically under 15,000 students like Central Washington University. Um, one key difference is that between private and public universities is that private universities can be either secular or religious. You will find that there are um, a lot of private universities um, that are, you know, affiliated with um, Christian religion or some may be affiliated with other religions, Judaism, etc. Um, and they can also be mission driven. Um, for example, um, Whitworth University um, is mission in part is um, its religious background, but also in part its liberal arts education philosophy. Um, you will find institutions in Washington state that are devoted specifically to art and design or to health programs. Um, or to, you know, computer science and technology. So there's a lot of different options. Um, additionally, um, private universities often offer financial aid to international students. So if you look at the sticker price at a private university, it may look very high and unaffordable. Um, but by the time a school has awarded a student maybe an academic and, and talent scholarship and or some need-based aid, the cost, like at Whitworth, for example, can be under, you know, it can be well under that sticker price and can be closer to what you would pay at a two-year community college. 
Um, there is often in private universities a strong focus on teaching undergraduate students and doing so in a collaborative small class setting. So you're not going to find, you know, a lot of classrooms that have, you know, 50, 100, 200 students as you sometimes can in very large public institutions. Um, and a focus on undergraduate students and teaching also often means um, excellent undergraduate research opportunities. So uh, you don't necessarily need to go to a large um, public research op uh, university in order to get that research experience if you're interested in, you know, the STEM or technology or social sciences, for example. Next slide, please. Thank you. So as mentioned, um, I uh, work at Whitworth University. Whitworth just celebrated 131 years. We are a private Christian liberal arts and sciences university. Um, and we welcome truly students of all faiths and backgrounds and from dozens of countries around the world. Um, we offer 60 different undergraduate majors, so students have a lot of options. Um, some of our most popular programs with both um, our US and international students include our health science major, um, our various computer science programs, engineering, biology, our business majors. Um, we also have a dual degree engineering program that um, a lot of international students find very exciting because for that we are partnered with Washington State University as well as um, University of Southern California, Columbia University and the city of New York. Um, for um, our dual degree engineering. I'm happy to talk to you about that in the breakout room. Um, at Whitworth though, as a liberal arts um, university, we will focus you intently on your major in whatever area that is, um, while also having you take classes in a wide variety of subjects from which you can draw on to think about and approach your major and problems in new ways. And this really strong interdisciplinary learning model means you might have a class in computer science, but it may be team taught by professors from marketing and psychology. And so you may have a discussion about, um, you know, how um, human psychology and what gets people to buy fancy tech gadgets can help you in, um, you know, being not only good in your computer science major, but learning to think beyond that for how to create the next great thing and how to market that to the public, something that, say, um, Apple computers is so good at. Um, but, you know, really you will develop skills in innovative thinking, creative problem solving and effective communication and collaboration that are skills that employers look for. Um, we also have a 99% um, placement rate for students seeking employment in the US post-graduation through the optional practical training program. And we have students working all over the US, um, including at top ranked companies like Amazon, um, where they are putting their degree to use and really learning a lot and gaining a lot of practical experience. Um, our international alumni are also pursuing graduate programs at top universities from Yale to Georgia Tech, Georgetown, Tulane Medical Center, and more. Um, we are very much aware that international students need and deserve support. Um, we have a whole Office of International Education to support students, but we also support students ac um, financially through uh, merit scholarships, including academic and talent scholarships, as well as need-based aid opportunities and a handful of competitive full tuition scholarships. 
Um, we hope that, um, you know, all of us at Whitworth that you'll consider um, Whitworth University. And I would love to speak to you about Whitworth and also just about the liberal arts education model in the breakout room later. Thank you. Next slide, please. Great, thank you so much for coming back to Western Washington University. I guess I should ask for a thumbs up again as if you folks can hear me. Oh, better. Um, I usually love talking about Western, but with, with the unstable internet, that gets a little bit nerve wracking. So um, I'm going to leave my video off and let this be the radio portion of the program. Um, again, my name is Casey Egger. I represent Western Washington University and I love talking about Western not just because I'm a representative for the school, but I'm also an alumni of Western. Um, I graduated way back in 2002 with degrees in linguistics and psychology. And I chose Western primarily because I had heard of its academic excellence. Um, I had friends go to Western and, and tell me these great stories about Bellingham and their academic experience. But after visiting the campus and experiencing how welcoming the students, the staff and, and the people in Bellingham were and just how beautiful the location was, I knew that's where I wanted to study. So as you can see from the picture there, uh, Western Washington University is positioned right on the Puget Sound. So that's a part of the uh, Pacific Ocean up on the Northwest coast. It's an uh, inlet of the Pacific Ocean, I should say, with about 400 archipelago islands. Um, it's recognized in it as an outdoor lover's paradise. We offer world-class skiing and snowboarding at nearby Mount Baker Ski Resort. We are a gold level biking community. There's paddling and kayaking on the vast waterways and all the hiking you can imagine um, with 200 acre arboretum right behind the campus there. And even if you're not an outdoor lover, isn't it just great to study somewhere where it's beautiful, the air is fresh and there are just plenty of opportunities to get outside when you want. We're considered uh, a medium sized campus in a medium sized city. So I call that the Goldilocks syndrome. You know, we're not too big and we're not too small, we're just right, right there in the middle there. So if you're afraid of big cities or you don't wanna live in a, 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 tall, a small town, you know, go for the middle, somewhere right with about 90,000 uh, residents and 16,000 students. Um, one of the great things about Western too is it, its proximity to those larger big cities. So within an hour's drive or a train ride, uh, you can get to Vancouver, uh, BC in Canada or in an hour and a half down to Seattle, um, depending on traffic, of course. Uh, we're known as a teacher's college. And what that means is that the goal of our university is to teach our student and our focus is on the undergraduate experience. So it doesn't take four or five years for you to start getting hands-on research experience. Students at Western, they're gonna start that in their first year. Um, our faculty and our staff are going to hone in on students who are really curious and passionate about their education and get them in the labs and write and publish work with uh, their professors and students. We have a low faculty student ratio with a, about 18 to one. There are over 175 programs to choose from. So really anything that you think that you want to study, you're going to probably find it at Western, including computer science, cybersecurity, vehicle design, Manufacturing engineering and our close proximity to Boeing is a great access for students to be able to go get that hands on training. But um, again, even if there's something we don't offer at Western, we actually have a Fairhaven College, which is an interdisciplinary liberal arts college on campus where you can create and design your own major. Pretty awesome opportunities. We're considered a Best Buy. Um, and primarily because of our affordability, but also the scholarships that we offer. We have scholarships for international students up to $10,000 per year. It's an automatically reviewed scholarship, no additional application. It's usually based on your GPA. So if you're a 3.0 and above, you're eligible, but we'll do a holistic review to see where you fall um, on, that, on that scale of uh, scholarships. Bellingham itself was rated the number one best college town in Washington based on reviews.org. That was the 2019 survey. Um, and so it's just a really great place to study. And for the past 20 years, Western has been ranked the number one regional university in the Pacific Northwest. So that's, you know, Oregon, Washington, Idaho region. 
I love Western, as I said. I hope that you want to learn more, that you reach out to our institution, that you request more information, and I'd be so happy to talk to you more about Western, and, and thanks for the opportunity and the time. And we'll skip back forward, um, I believe, back to uh, Bjorn to talk about graduate programs in the U.S. Thank you, Casey. Um, and as Casey and uh, Marie and others have talked about, uh, a lot of public and private universities have graduate programs. Graduate programs in the United States are called uh, master's or doctorate programs. A doctorate is another way of saying like a PhD. So a master's or PhD is what we call graduate education. Undergraduate is where you work towards a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree at a community college. And community colleges will never have graduate programs. So a community college is very affordable for undergraduate education, but a community college does not have a master's or a PhD program. Um, but a lot of uh, great universities have graduate programs. And if you want to apply to a graduate program, you usually need a four-year bachelor's degree. Or, the, or a lot of times in Europe, I know they give three-year bachelor's degree. If it's going to be equivalent to a US four-year bachelor's degree, great, apply and, and go from there. Um, a common test you need to get into graduate school for a master's level is a GRE. Uh, graduate uh, research examination, or sometimes for a business master's degree, you could take the GMAT uh, test. And uh, some programs require this test with a certain, and some programs do not require uh, these standardized test scores for graduate level programs. And just to clarify, a master's in America is normally two years. A PhD program is normally about three, maybe five years for a PhD program, depends how how uh, studious you are and how uh, good you are in your timeline. But uh, some master's programs are one year if they're more intense. I did a one year master's program in education at a private university. Um, so, but most programs are designed to be two years just to give you that heads up. Because I know in the UK, a lot of the master's programs are one year. So that's a big difference between Europe and America. Um, my best piece of advice, if you wanna get a master's or a PhD, Find a, a good fit university that has your program and then inquire with them um, because there is a lot of differences in the admission requirements, in the size of the programs, and also in scholarships and funding. Because um, uh, don't think because of the sticker price or because it's a prestigious university, public or private, you can't afford it or can't do your uh, graduate study. Some common scholarships for graduate uh, students would be like a teaching assistantship, a, reaching, a research assistantship, or a fellowship. And some of those could give you your tuition covered in half or in full to get a master's or a PhD if you get one of those prestigious uh, graduate scholarships. Um, but oftentimes students have their own master's and PhD programs with you know, personal savings, with small scholarships, with loans, ways to afford a graduate education in America. And uh, the graduate uh, admission deadlines and timelines to apply are usually more strict and more firm than undergraduate. So if you're looking for undergraduate, sometimes we can be more flexible with rolling admission, but for master's or a PhD, they're pretty rigid and strict on when you should apply and, and get admitted. If you have more questions about graduate programs, uh, I believe I'll be talking about this in the breakout room. And um, if you're thinking about medical school or pharmacy school or veterinary medicine or a master's in business administration, I'd be happy to talk to you about that later in the breakout room. Thank you. All right, uh, transitioning on to scholarships and affordability. So, uh, for international students, this is one of the most important factors uh, for families to decide where, uh, where you're going to study abroad. We know that education in the USA can be very expensive or seem very expensive compared with other countries. Uh, but the most important thing to do is a lot of research and ask a lot of questions because every university and college in the United States is going to be different in what scholarships they offer, um, and how much, ranging from a lot of stackable smaller scholarships to potentially full tuition scholarships or even uh, full ride scholarships, which just so you know, are going to be very competitive. Um, so first year and transfer scholarships are available at most universities. So if you're doing the two plus two, for example, 
Um, most universities will offer scholarships also for transfer students and not just first year. Um, scholarships range from types. So if you're looking at maybe an art program or theater, music, um, you might look into talent or performance-based scholarships based on auditions. If you're looking into uh, athletics, a lot of schools offer competitive athletic scholarships. And a lot of schools also offer international specific scholarships because um, international students are typically not able to apply for US-based federal aid as domestic students would be. So um, it's good to inquire about international specific scholarships available at different schools. There are also need-based awards. So meaning based on your family's financial situation, um, you'll want to look into or inquire about um, the CSS profile, which is a need-based scholarship um, and does require a separate application. Some scholarships require applications and others, uh, as, have, as we've mentioned, would be automatically awarded based on things like GPA or your application in academic history. Some scholarships can be combined or as we, um, we call them stackable. So stackable scholarships means that you may earn a, an athletic scholarship and you may also earn an international scholarship, which can be combined to further reduce your um, total cost of tuition. So it's important to find out if that school offers stackable scholarships or if you can only be using one, one type of scholarship. Be aware of deadlines. This is really important. At the very beginning of this presentation, it was mentioned that right now is the time you should be doing your research. Um, the important thing about applying early is looking at scholarship deadlines. So some colleges and universities have admissions deadlines, but they may also in addition have specific scholarship deadlines. So you wanna look and ask uh, whether or not there are deadlines to these scholarships. For example, at Central, um, we don't have ad, uh, ad scholarship deadlines currently. So it's just granted along with your admission, but other specific scholarships might have earlier deadlines because they're more competitive. Um, so you want to also look at affordability as far as we talked about different types of uh, university settings. So if you're planning to study in the Seattle area, important to know that the cost of living might be a lot higher. Um, you may have better job opportunities or higher wage potential, um, but it, it is relative to the cost of living. Smaller towns might be a little bit more affordable as far as rent and housing. In Washington State, we have a very high minimum wage. So students are eligible to work on campus as F1 visa holders, international students coming to the US are automatically able to work on campus jobs. And Washington is great because again, you'll be earning a minimum of 1350 per hour working on campus. And then there are also a lot of universities have opportunities for internships through CPT. That's something to ask about early because those could be paid or unpaid, but that's something that you can be authorized to do as an international student work through curriculum based training. And then another benefit of international uh, uh, for international students is between one and three years of OPT authorization. So that means that you as a part of your academic program would be authorized to work for up to three years if you're a stem. Um, in a STEM major, you would have a three-year extension on the work authorization. And another benefit, if you're looking at a community college associate's degree and then transferring on to a bachelor's degree, after you complete your first two years at the associate's level, you're granted one to three years of work authorization. And then you could move on to a bachelor's degree where you're again given another one to three years. At every level, you're given another um, work authorization. So if you then did a graduate degree program, you would be eligible to do what is known as OPT or optional practical training, work experience um, for a, even a third time. And moving on to the next slide. That is the end of our formal presentation. And I think um, Will is going to um, talk about the breakout rooms that are coming up. Sure, I'll go ahead and put up the slide.